it's Andrew Huang, and today I am doing the Beethoven Flip Challenge. It's really easy. All you do is choose a Beethoven piano piece, search online for an accurate MIDI sequence of it, then import that into a digital audio workstation and move all the notes so that they have an inverted relationship with the first note. In other words, keeping the intervallic distance identical, but reversing the direction from that first note. It's a really fun, easy challenge. All the big YouTubers are doing it, and I tag you. This isn't a real challenge. This is a little experiment I've been wanting to do for a while just to see what happens when you turn the way music works on its head. In my extreme reharmonization video, I talked about how in a group of notes, we hear them all in relation to the lowest one. That one sets the context for the rest of them. In that video, I shared this musical example. And I played that to show how all these high notes could keep doing the same thing, but every time the bass note changed, the feeling of the music would change. I'm gonna play the exact same thing again now, but I'm gonna switch where my hands are. The notes are the same, the patterns are the same, they're just in different registers, but I think if you ask most people, they would say that that is less musical. I'm taking things even further with the Beethoven flip. It's not just about switching hands, it's not just about high parts being low and low parts being high. It's keeping the first note the same and then placing all the other notes the opposite distance they should be from that first note. If it was one step lower, now it's one step higher. So the opening phrase of Fura Lee's that you all know becomes this. It's the tonal inverse of the composition, and I just wanna know what that sounds like. So I've gone through the piece on my computer and made all the necessary adjustments to the notes. Some of the formerly low notes are now so high that they're out of range of the piano. So I dropped the whole thing down an octave so that we can still hear all the notes. I'm gonna listen to it for the first time right now with you and see if inverted Beethoven has any musical merit. Okay, here we go. Whoa. You know, I was expecting it to be worse. But I guess we've preserved a lot of the uh, harmony. This part's cool. It's, it's a lot more sonorous than I was expecting. I was expecting it to be kind of dissonant. The melody is weaker, I would say. It's just, it's unnatural, it's awkward. But all those beautiful um, arpeggios are still there. They're just flipped. Here's the B section. I'm like mesmerized by this. Weird last chord. Okay. For those of you who are interested, I will put the whole piece without my commentary on top of it on my second channel. Link for that in the video description and probably in a card up here somewhere. One thing I didn't really even think about till now is that when you invert these pitches but you keep the intervals the same, you're also preserving the chords, the types of chords anyway, they're in different voicings. And I guess another thing that has been preserved is Beethoven's beautiful melodic timing. You still have the same ebb and flow of which notes he decided to make longer or shorter. The spacing in pitch has also been preserved, it's just been flip. So when he wanted to do a large jump or a very intricate run, those things are the same. They're just moving in the opposite direction. And I think you still end up getting pretty close to the original emotion that the piece was trying to convey. Not what I expected at all. I thought this was going to be dissonant piano from hell, but uh, 
I'm pleasantly surprised. So I'm starting to feel a little theory come on that maybe we lucked out with a piece that doesn't have a whole lot of suspended bass notes throughout it. I wonder if we tried this with other pieces where the bass notes were much more prominent and much less um, melodic in themselves, if they would clash more with the other stuff that's going on. I'm curious now, maybe I'll try this again. I would invite you guys to do this too if you have any MIDI software. If you do a water bottle uh, MIDI flip, please send them in to me. I'll put my, just just tweet them at me. And if nobody does this, because who has the time to do this? <laughs> Actually, it only took me about 15 minutes to flip the whole piece. So, MIDI flip challenge 2017. I expect at least one entry. Why am I still wearing these earbuds? Hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of this MIDI flip experiment. And thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon with a new video. So please subscribe, turn on notifications, and peace out.